Hey guys, this is Nick Sievert from Django FX, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the fade node. First, what you got to do is you got to right click in the node graph and bring up the fade node. Uh, as you can see, whenever it first starts out, it starts out as a point fade, but we also have another option called line fade. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and do point fade. You can see that as soon as I double click it, the particles start moving outwards from inside the box. And if we press Control W, we can see, uh, and actually let me hide the particles too with control A, we can see that basically how it works is it starts at zero in the center and then goes all the way out to a length of one. And we can see that with the min being in the center and max being on the outside of the vector field. Uh, exponent is just what multiplier is it. Um, it's basically kind of like a power node as well. So imagine power in math uh, it's just uh, like two to the second power one to the third power or whatever uh, that's basically what this exponent does and so uh, from here you can see that we have the min zero max one and if we change max to negative one now it's going from negative one on the outside to zero on the inside and so if we reshow the particles, or actually unhide the particles and then restart the simulation, and we still have cut Y enabled, uh, you can see that the particles slow down as they get into the center. If we make the minimum negative one and the max zero, you can see that our vector field is now fading out uh, from here. But let's go ahead to our viewport settings real quick, and let's, or sorry, 3D view controls, change our spawn radius, and you can see that not all of the particles are being pulled into the center whenever we do this. The reason for that is that point fade is more of a spherical modifier. Since it's a point in space, it uh, influences all the vectors around it like a sphere. And so uh, if you're going from, say, uh, zero, which you would hope would be all the way in this corner, to one, it's actually only going to zero right around here and then around these corners, as you can see. And so it's, it might be kind of hard to see in the video, but if you look, there is a ring around this. So let me unhide the rest of the vector field with Control W. You can see that there is a sphere inside the box. And because of that, we have like these chamfers where the vectors don't quite reach. And so what we can do to fix that is we simply uh, just lower the, uh, let's not do that part. We take the maximum and make it so that it's like negative 0.4. And so it's not completely from zero, but we can make it so there's almost zero on the edges right there. So there we go. And so now all of our vectors are pulling in towards the center. And uh, the next thing, which that, that pretty much uh, explains point fade, there is one more cool thing you can do, where if we make the minimum negative one, and oh, oops, so the max negative one, and the minimum one, we can see that a sphere will form in the center. And of course, uh, by changing your exponent, you can grow the sphere bigger or smaller. And uh, that's basically it. So that's right, there's how you create your procedural sphere. Of course, you can play with these settings to uh, change it up a bit. So let's just go ahead and delete this node now to get a fresh fade going. And, go on, and then we click this, let's click line fade. Now you can see, I'll double click it. Now you can see that the vectors are pushed out in uh, more of a cylindrical type manner rather than a sphere all the way around. And if we show the arrows with control S again, we can see that there is a line going down the center instead of a point. So there's a line right here. And then once again, the vectors are going from zero to one. And so the minimum is zero, which is in the center. Maximum is the outside of the field. And we can see that they're going from zero to one. Of course, if we change the max to negative one and the min to negative one, it all pulls into a line. And so this is why it's called line fade. And so of course, you can do some pretty cool things with a line fade or a point fade. And so by default, if you want to do a rotation, you can plug the line fade into a rotate we change the angle, and now you can see all the vectors rotating around this axis. And of course, if we made it so that uh, the min was um, one and the max was negative one, 
you'll see that we get differentiating rotations and it almost forms a cylinder and that's all dependent on what your angle is and so there you go that right there is how you can get some pretty cool rotation stuff that's basically what line fade and point fade is uh, well actually sorry I did not describe what origin meant so with this uh, origin you can change the origin of the field let me remove this rotate and click this again so if we change the origin in Z nothing's going to happen because uh, it's currently in the Z axis which is the direction that it's pointing however if we change Y you can see that the Y is moving and if we change X it's moving and basically this right here just changes the origin of the field and so now if we change the direction you can see that we can pivot the actual vector field in a different axis so we can draw a line through a different thing uh, a different axis and if you're wondering well hey you know I can't really see the line in the future we will have indicators that show uh, how the different uh, nodes are affecting the vector field with like a lattice or something like that to demonstrate where the line is going through so you can see that with direction you can just kind of change it all up and change you know the direction that it's pointing and of course with point fade I forgot to mention but you can change the origin of the point fade as well and then of course you know if you have nodes that are kind of getting a little bit big you can always normalize them but the thing with normalize is is it makes all vectors equal one we'll probably have a node in the future that uh, scales nodes between say zero and one that way you don't lose some of your details uh, that really is it now I do believe and if you have any questions please leave us a comment below and if you like the video like it subscribe to us and I hope you enjoyed it bye bye